What you doing? What you doing there? Hey everybody, thank you for watching. My name is Tom, this is Milo. Welcome back to Acres of Adventure. This is just a quick video. I'm just trying to show you guys a little bit of what goes on through the day with having a great Pyrenees. He is almost six months old. So for anyone who is looking to maybe get a breed, we're just showing you a few clips of everything that's kind of happened throughout the time that we've had him. Please subscribe for more videos and enjoy watching a day in the life with this big guy. All right, so everyone ever wondered what it would be like to have a great Pyrenees? Well, for some reason, they have an internal alarm clock that starts at 6.30 every morning, no matter what. So the first thing we gotta do is make sure that we hurry up to get him outside. If we do not get him outside, then he likes to leave us a small or big present on our carpet. And we do not want that. So unfortunately, living in an apartment complex right now, and we are gonna be moving out to our house in about a month where we have two acres. But we right now will have to keep him on a chain because of the apartment rules. We can't just let him roam freely, but he is a good pup and we cannot wait to let him have the outdoor room to roam and get a perimeter that is his own. Now it's time to let him in. It is time for him to tell us the main reason why he wanted to wake us up at 6.30, which is breakfast time. We are not used to having a pup that has been so food obsessed. And in the morning, we have to try to get him it's two cups of food, and if you heard me right, it is two cups. He gets two cups every serving, and he gets three servings. Here's his little happy dance, because this is probably the most important time of the day for him and his most favorite. We went with the slow feeder bowl option. When we first got him as a young puppy, we realized that he was finishing his food in less than a minute. We read online that, especially for this breed, that is common but that could give him stomach problems in the future. So we went with the slow feeder. It slowed down his eating. It probably cut his food time, not cut his food time, probably prolonged his food time in about half. When he's all done eating though, it's time to check our other pup's bowl to make sure, is there anything left over? Realizes there isn't, so maybe I should go check my bowl one more time. All right, so now his big two things are done in the morning. He's all done eating. He is done going potty. He usually has to go out one more time after eating. And now you think, okay, he should be a little more content, but nope. His next goal this morning is to make sure everybody is up in the house. So I try to lay back down. As you can see, he was not gonna let that happen. Moves on to my wife next. As you can see, he has the same kind of strategy. It's the paw and mouthing strategy until one of us or all of us are up. Now he has to move on to our other pup who loves to cuddle with us. And Milo says, nope, I don't think that's gonna happen either. And again, with the paw and the mouthing. He is very gentle though, so it is a very good thing of this breed if you guys are gonna get in them. They are very gentle dogs. We had to close our door in our bedroom before the girls got up so that he doesn't go to try to wake them up. He'll scratch at their bedroom door until they wake up. So this is kind of a way that we contain so that the girls can get their sleep. Since these are such big dogs, you want to try to make sure they can get some energy out. Also, while we live in an apartment, we definitely want to make sure we're getting them on his walks. But even if you don't, take them on walks, get them outside. These dogs are meant to be outdoors most of their life. They love being outdoors. So we try to make sure that we get them on a routine where he can go on a walk at least once or twice, take him out to parks, let him explore more, give him more of like a parameter to move around. And you might think this video is fast forward. It is not. This is how fast they walk. I don't know why, but they always do walk together like this, which is nice. Um, Milo has definitely taken Bailey in and Bailey is part of his pact. I think Bailey might be his favorite in the household. I would definitely make sure that you take your puppies for walks. You can tell the difference in the day from them on a day that you take them on a walk or on a day that you don't. When they get that energy out, it makes it easier for you for the rest of the day. They usually are a little more calm, a little tired, so it makes it easier. When we get him in, we like to give him a treat, make sure that he knows that he did good out there, that the exercise is good for him, reward him for the behavior. And you think that after having a treat and breakfast that he'd be fine, but nope, here he is 
doing a table surf. We're not used to having such big dogs like this before, where he can just easily get up on our table and with kids, it's something to think about. Since they leave food all the time, he's just hunting for food all the time. Now for his nap. He naps about three or four times a day, usually in pretty good spurts, about an hour, hour and a half, two hours. And he is just a very calm dog for most of the day, except for his like hour spurts, which I'll get into. As you can see here, it's so easy just to kind of pet him. He play bites, he plays with his paws, but it's very gentle. He's a very good dog. He does not try to do anything vicious. He is not out to go crazy. A lot of his play is always calm play like this. Something that he just started, as you can see, he has a big flap, which drips water all over when he drinks. But he did just start losing his first few baby teeth, which was a little exciting. But we we're just finding them all over. That's the other problem. And for our Great Pyrenees, one of the things that makes them unique is their double dew claws. The reason they have these is since they are working dogs, it helps them climb out of ponds or dig holes, uh, things of those sort of nature. So that's why they have them. Um, just beware, they can get caught on things. So just watch out for your dog and what it could catch on. Also, one thing to know with these pups is beware that they aren't, it's not that they don't like you, it's that they really enjoy being outside. When you let them outside, they will just sometimes sit out there, lay out there, not really want to come back in. And this is just all part of the breed. They enjoy the outdoors, and this is just something that you'll have to adapt with with them. They aren't doing it to ignore you. This is just the thing they're going to need. And that's why make sure that you can get them out as much as you can. So even though we do live here, he is out here a lot. He does do a lot of talking, which you guys will hear which is a little something that we were told to watch out for. And here he is. He has a second alarm clock of the day in his head, and that is around our lunchtime, which is also his. Another two cups. And I'm telling you, you will go through puppy food, so make sure that you buy big bags. It's not even worth buying the small bags of puppy food. You're gonna have to feed them a good amount or we noticed before that he was throwing up in the morning, which was a sign of that he wasn't being fed properly. So we made sure to up his intake from four cups to six for the day. These dogs, since they are like a herding, working type dog, they do take you in as part of their pact. And when you leave and you're all gone for the day, they will not be happy. As you can see, he sprints right to the window with our other pup and they let us hear it that they are not happy because they do not like being separated. And when we show back up into the house, you get all the excitement and we get them from both pups. But he is such a big guy that watch out for your kids. He just will pile them over and not doing it meanly. He just wags his butt and his tail so much that it just knocks them over sometimes. The downfall is that after all of this excitement, he usually lets us know that he wasn't happy, so he starts trying to find some trouble. This dog has been obsessed with water. He will jump into a bathtub, even if you are in it. If it is water in it, he loves the bathtub. And he loves finding paper or anything else that might be on the ground as well. And just like any other puppy, you will have to find things that are chewed up throughout the house. And anything that he can get his mouth on is usually there. And this is more likely, like I said, after we've been gone for the day for a little bit, or maybe on a day, like I said earlier, when we didn't go for a walk or something that he usually tries to find some kind of problem. But man, we've ended up, we've came home sometimes with a hole in our carpet. We've come home with holes in our blinds or just blinds completely missing in the house and that he tore up all over the ground. And of course, any other kid toy that he can find. We, it's kind of like his own little, uh, love touch to all the toys for the kids. And even after all that, he is one amazing family dog. The girls can just hug him, and touch right by his face, and there's no problem. He snuggles with them, and it's just a very good family dog for anyone who's thinking about getting him. Don't be afraid of, oh no, like what's gonna happen? How are they gonna interact with kids? He interacts good with kids, he interacts good with other dogs, and he interacts good with other people as they walk by. 
So I would not shy away from getting a great pair of knees because you're afraid of how they're gonna act with anybody. These dogs are very calm and as soon as they are part of your pack and he has taken you in as the family, then everything is fine. You will, however, want to not be a toy for him sometimes. So have dog toys for him. He still plays with them, even though all the time he likes to find another toy that's maybe the kid's toy or maybe like a sock or a hat of mine. But play with them because after you're done playing, it'll be nap time again and you'll be thankful for all the playing you did so that he can get some rest and that you can get some time where you don't have to have so much energy with him. Now it's time for the third alarm clock of the day. It is dinner time. He is smelling what we're cooking and he will just jump up right up onto these counters. He stopped at this very moment because I caught him in the act, but he will just sniff up here and he is just looking for food whenever he can. I have never had a dog that is so food obsessed. I know that dogs love food, but he is just looking for food so much. And it just makes me wonder that maybe the six cups isn't enough, but it just seems ridiculous to feed him more. But we have heard that it is hard to overfeed a puppy. So don't be afraid that if you feel like he needs more food, if you have a great pair of knees, that maybe that might be the case. So it is something to think about for us that we might experiment with. At this moment, I do think that six cups is a perfect amount for him. But one thing that's been hard to adjust is the sense of having the second pup that now she has had to learn to have her whole meal in one serving. So anyone who has a second pup, just think about it. It's hard to have a puppy and you can't just have food on the ground. And anyone who got this pup and thinks that, oh, like, I don't know if they're going to shed or not. There is an easy answer to that question. And it starts with a Y and ends with ES. Yes. This dog does a lot of shedding. Uh, he just started, must have been getting or losing a winter coat. So you need to take time out of your week about once at least, but I would probably suggest twice to give him a good comb and get a lot of this fur so that you are not finding it all over the house in just a little bit. He stays really calm for combing, so it's not a problem at all. There's a few spots that he doesn't like but you definitely need to make sure you spend time out of the week to get his coat combed and groomed. And if that's something that you can't do, make sure that you take him somewhere to get groomed. As you can see here, I hit a good sweet spot and he is enjoying the comb a lot from right here. But here's only about half of the fur that I got from this time combing him. And you may be asking, how is that only half? What do you mean? Where's the other half? Well, I'll show you. It ended up all over me. Wearing black and having a white Great Pyrenees does not mix, so beware. The day is now starting to wind down, so he gets a little bit more play biting in with our other pup. And as you can tell, he's just very gentle. Both of them do a really good job. If one of them ends up kind of nipping the other one a little harder than expected, they usually kiss each other, make up, and stop what they're doing, and then they end up going right back at it again. And they usually do this about four or five times throughout the day. And the good one is usually the one before bedtime because then we can get them down and they usually take a good sleep. It's now nighttime when we start to get ready for bed and we're rocking the girls. He already knows to start heading towards the bed for himself. He'll head into our bedroom. He does not sleep on the bed, thankfully, because he is going to be a huge dog to be a bed dog, but he'll lay right by the side on the wall. He'll find a cozy spot. I think he likes that the cold air ends up against the wall lay down, and then it'll be time for good night. Thank you guys for watching. See you later.